Today we're doing a deep dive into the Snowfall DLC, the last one to cover for City Skylines. I saved this one for last because although you can benefit from some of the things about Snowfall in other maps, really where the bulk of the DLC and content come into play is actually building on a snow map. So just like all the other DLCs, this one comes with five new maps. And if you want to experience Snowfall, you've got to start a new build on one of those maps. Snow is not something that is coming to your existing maps. Fingers crossed we'll eventually see seasons at some point. I think that would be a really cool thing for cities. But for right now, again, if you want to experience Snowfall, you've got to start a new build on one of these Snowfall maps. My season five Let's Play called Winterfell is what you're seeing in the background here. And this has a lot of the Snowfall's content already built into it. It's a pretty loose, free-flowing, smaller city with mostly lower density, though I do have some high density kind of still hidden on the side of the map. Um, after the main build that happened in Season 5, I upgraded the city, got a bunch of people to move in so we could unlock monuments and drop some of that stuff in but ultimately ended up trimming the population back down. You can see trams on the screen right now. Those are one of the first areas of focus that I want to dive into. So let's start with that right now and dive into trams. I think by far one of the coolest things uh, about Snowfall and something that you can put in to any map, no snow required. So just like our other options when it comes to uh, trolley buses or helicopter depots, we need a depot to hook in to the line so that vehicles can be delivered to that line. If you have multiple trams across your city, you're going to need one of these buildings kind of connected to each line, or you're going to need the lines um, ultimately connected. These work like the trolley buses that we saw in the last episode when we did our deep dive into Sunset Harbor. But in case you missed that, let me take you through some of the basics. I've come off to the side of the map here and done a real basic road layout uh, just so we can kind of show this in action. We'll head on over to the transport tab and drop down connected to a road our tram depot. Now this could be connected to a four lane or a two lane. It is up to you. I guess it could be connected to a six lane also. But let's go ahead and drop this onto our road. Just like with the trolley buses, we'll get that little error pop up that, hey, this is connected to a road that doesn't have uh, tram tracks. Now tram roads come in a few different flavors. There's a regular two lane road. There's a two lane one way road, a four lane road with tram tracks. And you can also just do tram tracks all by themselves. And I actually have a plan for incorporating that piece specifically into the Plainville build. But let me show you kind of how this all works. So at the very least, let's assume we want these roads to have some tram wires. So as long as they connect at one intersection, right? They don't have to necessarily connect at both like that. Um, but as long as they connect at one spot, they're able to continue that traffic around and deliver trams to the other road networks. Now we could also upgrade this, right? If we wanted the trams to carry on to our four lane roads. This keeps the traffic in the center of the road. It does get rid of the parking lane in the process though. So streets feel a little bit less alive than they do with trolley buses, which does keep the parking lane, but also has the buses pulling off to the side of the road. I think having that, you know, transport traffic in the median and specifically people piling up on that center median is a really cool look and it's just one of my favorite modes of transport. The other thing that's worth pointing out with the trams is these support 90 passengers where buses support 30. There's three cars, so three times as much support for cramming people on there and moving them around. Trams are definitely one of my favorites. But back over here for a minute, what if we wanna complete that tram network but not actually have a four lane uh, tram road? Well, what we could do is we can actually build tram specific roads that don't support uh, car traffic. So you could do something like that. Once you have this network completed, you wanna draw your routes out. Now, be very careful here because these do fall on different sides of the road. On a two lane road, those stops will be on the outside of your road, whether it's an actual road for traffic or a road specific for trams. Alternatively, if you have a four lane road, they'll snap to the center and be careful which side of center they're snapping to. Because if we want this to kinda zip around and curve back into here. We could do that, but it's going to take kind of an odd path to get there. So as long as those routes can be completed, they won't give you any problems. Great way to move some people around your map. 
Now, if we look at our water view and specifically our pipes, you'll notice things may look a little bit different. And that's because these aren't just standard pipes. These are pipes that also carry heating. Now, if you're building networks of pipes out, regular pipes that is, and you create 440 or 460 if you want a little bit of a gap, I like 440 because there's a little bit of overlap instead. That'll create these nice parallel pipes where you get good coverage and don't have to overlap too, too much. If we jump over here though to the heating pipes, now we wanna think about things from a different perspective. They cover just as much area, but they're more expensive. So we want 2200 worth of pipe to create that same basic overlap. Now, what these can do is actually hook up into facilities that can heat water and deliver it to houses. For that, we have the geothermal heating plant. That's our first option. Uses heat from deep within the earth to distribute to the citizens. Again, it's important that you have those upgraded water pipes. Otherwise, nobody can take advantage of that. The other one you can do is the boiler station, and this produces about 50% more uh, hot water than uh, the previous offering, but same basic mechanics. These need to be hooked up to a water source to get that water into the building and then they will heat it and send it off to the network anywhere that network is. However, just like with power networks, if you start to have complaints about lack of hot water on the edges of your grid, those are the areas that will complain first when they're running out of service coverage. So make sure you're producing enough of that hot water for everybody. If you look in the bottom right of our UI, the reason that is so important is because it is freezing. It is negative four degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is way into the negative Celsius. It is cold on snowfall maps and your electric grid is going to feel that problem. So let's go into policies for a minute and talk about a couple of the things that we can do here. So if we go under city policies and services, there's the extra insulation policy option. Buildings will require less energy for heating thanks to extra insulation but they produce less tax income because of higher construction and maintenance costs. So this one doesn't specifically say that we have to eat any of that cost, just that we're gonna re reduce our tax income. So I, I think that's a good one if you're playing on a snowfall map, although you can see here, uh, I don't have it turned on. Let's go ahead and change that. Budget wise, I think we're doing okay, plus 40,000 per period surplus, 13 million in the bank. I think we can certainly afford to experiment on that one. Now, if we jump back in, you also have two other options where you can say no electricity for heat or only electricity for heat. Now, you probably won't mix and match these in the same city, obviously, uh, because you're forcing houses and businesses to choose one way or the other. They need heat. How are they going to get it? Well, they'll get it any way they can unless you have this option stamped down on the city or on a per district uh, level for the policies that affect a certain area. Pretty straightforward though, no electricity for heat says you are to not use electricity, you're supposed to use the hot water and that's how we're gonna supply uh, heat out to the buildings. Only electricity for heat is the exact opposite. They won't use the heated hot water pipes for that. Raises electricity consumption significantly during cold spells though, so do keep that in mind. At the very least, I think if you don't turn either of these on and just kind of let the citizens figure it out, um, it will at least balance itself out a bit. Only electricity for heat can cause just a ton of draw on your electric grid. No electricity for heat causes a ton of draw on your water grid or specifically the, uh, the boiler portion of that water grid. So keep that in mind, uh, play around with those, find the right balance for your city. And again, keep in mind that you can do, especially these two, no electricity or only electricity on a district specific level. Just in case that is new to you, if you go into your district tools, or the inspector tool, you can actually uh, interact with and inspect on a particular district and then go into policies and you're only affecting policies for that district. It says right at the top, district policies for Stark Park. If I make a change here, it only applies to the buildings, businesses, residents that live within that specific area. Now over here on the quarter of the main area of the town that I started are two of the most important mechanics for any snowfall map. And that is having a snow dump, someplace to put the snow, um, and a road maintenance depot. And these can be a little bit buried and hard to find, uh, but if you go under roads and road condition, well, now we've got the snow dump. This will send out snow plows to clear the streets of snow. And they return to the dump to dump it off. Snow gets melted to make room for more snow. So this is a dump that automatically deals with its own problem, but it can fill up and prevent you from gathering more snow. So keep that in mind. You may need to drop in uh, an additional one or two, depending on your map. The other mechanic that gets introduced with Snowfall is a road maintenance depot. They travel around the city to boost roads, 
allowing traffic to travel at higher than normal speeds. And that's a really important concept to understand. They are boosting the roads, making them better. They're not bad to begin with. They're just fine. They're totally fine. So don't worry about it. When we go into info views and right near traffic is this concept of road maintenance. When you don't have a road maintenance depot in, everything's going to be red, right? It's not boosted. It's normal. Normal is fine. Red when it comes to road maintenance is fine. That is the default condition. As these road maintenance trucks depart from this building and drive around your city, it will improve the condition of the roads and make it so vehicles can travel faster. That combined with removing the snow means that traffic will continue to flow nice across the city. How nice? Uh, we're at 82%. We've got a couple problem spots. Definitely snow dumps and having good road maintenance is a huge help and reduces a lot of the burden that snow causes on your city. Snow dump is not very useful or not even possible, I think, on a non snow map, but road maintenance depots are possible. So if you're looking to get some of the benefits of snowfall in a regular city, road maintenance depot is definitely one of those ones you should consider. Again, non boosted normal roads are red when you're looking at that view. Not a bad thing, just normal. When they're green, they are doing better. The actual coverage being green means that's where trucks will be driving to try and improve the road performance. You can see they're not getting over uh, into this area. So maybe we uh, add an extra <laughs> an extra road maintenance depot to help support uh, over here in our uh, industry area, which is just crazy dense. Now, I think one of the best things about Snowfall is all of the unique buildings. And these are ones that you can only drop into a snow map. They're very much uh, focused around those sorts of things, as you'll see in a moment. This first one is the Winter Market. These have uh, entertainment, no noise or pollution, which is great. And a good way to see people kind of buzzing around uh, areas of the city, even though it's really cold. Um, they'll get out, have some fun, hit the market up. Really should clean the snow off the top of those stalls. That seems like like a bit much. Then again, are these all abandoned right now? It's not. Ho hold on a second. How is this a winter market? All these stalls are abandoned and covered in a crippling weight of snow that's going to totally shatter this little marketplace. Just shovel the snow off the front. You're going to get ice falling down your head. This doesn't, this doesn't seem very safe in here. So be careful if you visit the winter market. Now, there is a brand new tab for winter unique buildings. There's a snowboard arena with a giant ramp that they come crashing down. There's a sleigh ride. There's Santa Claus's workshop, an ice hockey arena, a spa and hotel, the snow castle restaurant, the ski resort, which I apparently haven't unlocked because I haven't filled one snow dump, even though I upgraded the city to where we unlocked monuments. The Igloo Hotel, nice little cold getaway. There's also a collection of unique parks, things like skating rinks that you can put in. That poor kid, by the way, has been falling flat on his butt for years at this point. So I don't think he's going to catch on at this point, but they keep trying. So bless his heart. As much as I'd like to go into great detail and depth on Snowfall, really, that's about it. There's a ton of unique buildings and new ways that you can decorate your city, especially if you are playing on a snow based map. If you are, you're going to want to drop in that snow dump and road maintenance depot. But even if you want to use some of these options for snowfall on a standard map, I think between things like road maintenance and specifically the trams, you can do a ton of cool stuff with your cities. I love the look of the trams so much. I want to love the trolley buses. They don't support enough people. Trams kind of hit that sweet spot in the middle where it's moving enough people around. It has the same complexities and challenges with road maintenance that the trolley buses do, but the added benefit of just increasing the capacity for uh, people that are moving around. What are all these people doing? Are they all coming from a game? My goodness. That's a, that's a lot of people on the road for this town. But uh, this one was a weird one. Snowfall specifically, again, you won't be able to take advantage of all these features and functions and unique buildings in your standard map. So and if you want to build on a snowy map, Snowfall is a fantastic option for that. If it doesn't interest you particularly, then I think you can get by with some of the other DLCs. Have monorails or metro instead of tram. Have trolley buses instead of tram. But if it's part of your DLC pack anyways, hopefully this gave you some ideas, maybe some things that you forgot about 
or if it's not in your repertoire, maybe it gave you an idea whether or not uh, this is a DLC for you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This deep dive series has been fun to kind of unpack uh, and understand all the individual elements of all these DLCs, but we've still got a little bit more to go. So we will be returning to Plainville very soon to talk about all the content creator packs and all the other things that uh, we can add on with DLC. And we'll do some maintenance and tuning and tweaking and see if we can get that into a really good spot. But we'll, be, we'll also be revisiting a lot of the old cities coming up. So if that is an interest to you, ways that we can improve old builds, especially if you've been a fan for a while and seen some of these builds from their infancy, would appreciate it if you stayed tuned and came along for the ride on those as well. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, likes, comments, shares, they all help so much and they are all so greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. We're going back to Plainville next and see what we can clean up, what we can drop in for content creator packs and other things like that. And then I think I'm going to continue down this deep dive series, but diving into concepts of the game, uh, traffic management, transportation, city policies, budget, all these different things that we can uh, dive into, hopefully give you a better understanding for how to make the most out of your city, make it as effective and profitable as possible. And really appreciate if you came along for the ride. So hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Until then though, it is cold outside in real life and it is cold in game. So I think I'm gonna load up a city that is not covered in snow to at least make me feel warm inside, if not out. Until the next one though, from the town of Winterfell, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.